Okay, so this right here is what we're gonna do. We gotta replace this rubber, okay? It won't turn, it's pretty frozen. The, this little hollow, it's a hollow steel pin. Um, it's known as a drift pin. Well, it's been hammered in there many, many years ago and it's steel and this is steel and it kind of froze together. The other side, same thing, frozen. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut both ends of that off flush with the actual pin itself. I'm gonna cut both of those off. Then we can hammer it through that's the only way to get it off. So we're gonna go like this. This grinding tool, I'm gonna to cut it right there. I'm gonna cut it right there. And then I can tap it right through. So if you don't have a cutoff tool like this, I highly suggest getting one. Okay, well, the other thing I'm doing, this trailer, it has one of those jacks that you wind up with the wheel so you can roll it around and stuff. And this is part of it. I, I, took, I took the hardware out. I'm going to uh, take this thing all apart, take this gear out. I'm gonna clean it all up and grease it really nice and uh, just kind of refurbish everything. The wheel on the front was so bent and crooked and rusty, I, I actually had to cut it off. I cut the bolt off, the head of the bolt off. So here's the part that the wheel goes into. All right, well, I got our frame and our fenders and underneath our fenders, all etched, ready for Oh, etched and rinsed. It's okay, so you gotta neutralize it with water. Now the metal is prepared for 415, which stands for paint over rust. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint all this metal. I was not gonna use these fenders. I was gonna use these fenders from the 50s from a company called the T-Knee Trailer Company. But I decided not to use them after all. We're gonna stick with these big heavy duty ones. And there we are. Ready for pour 15. Well, I just went up the hill and I sandblasted our rims down. So we're gonna go ahead and prime them and paint them tomorrow.
right, it's West Coast Johnny and we're getting ready to paint. So I'm going to paint this boat shortly today. Uh, I just wanted to show you, instead of polishing, I started to polish, strip and polish, you know, the boat. And then I decided that I was going to paint it two-tone, except for this. It's like a little, uh, you see that? It sticks out like a fin. See that? Like on a 62 Cadillac. A 1962 Cadillac lower fin, it has an angle that comes out on the bottom. Looks just, just like that. As a matter of fact, I'll show you one right now. Okay, so here's a 1962 Cadillac, Coupe de Ville. See this, how it has this fin that kind of sticks out the side, it goes all the way down. That's what the boat has. Hey, good morning, West Coast Johnny. It's Friday the 13th. So I painted the boat, okay? It's, it was, I thought it was gonna be completely done today, but uh, to my surprise, the finish is like a flat and it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be gloss. As a matter of fact, it was uh, what's known in the automotive painting business as a single stage paint which means all you have to do is add the hardener and maybe a little reducer, but you don't have to do a clear coat because it just dries shiny. Well, this is perfectly flat and it wasn't supposed to be. So I just papered off what we're gonna protect. This is the chrome spear, the Cadillac spear, and then the green for just some overspray. And I'm gonna spray the whole boat again in the back. We're gonna hit it with the clear coat. So I went and got some clear coat. I'm gonna mix that up right now and we're gonna hit this. Well, I'm uh, deciding which spray tip to use. I think I'm going to use this one because it has a lot of little holes. I don't know if you can see those little holes. And then it has a bigger and a smaller one on the sides. And that has a lot to do with uh, how the material comes out and I've been wanting to try this one. I haven't tried it yet. So we're gonna try that with the clear. There we go, we got the nice gloss shine on there. Okay, so in a, probably in another hour or so when it's uh, drying, I'll pull the paper off. So we went ahead and went all around it. And then right here, we have a, a, a big bolt, like a hook. And that's so that you can hook the boat to your trailer. So it was aluminum. It was all, you know, cast aluminum. It was just kind of uh, plain looking. So I went ahead and I sanded it all down and I polished it. So that's going to look pretty cool. Unfortunately, I get a lot of bugs. Right here, a termite flew in there. So I guess that's my revenge for uh, being a termite guy for 30 years. So, all right, well, that's where we're at. All right, so I uh, went ahead and I cleaned the spray gun out with some acetone and uh, you, you just fill it up and then you spray it till only acetone comes out, clear acetone. That'll get, mo then you know most of the paint is out. Then what you gotta do on a sprayer, this is an HVLP, which stands for high volume, low pressure. 
And what you gotta do is take this little part off. It's called the air cap. It's two pieces. You take your air cap off, okay? Then underneath there, you have what's called the nozzle. You wanna take the nozzle off. I already loosened it up for the video. Now, you may see some acetone come out. See that? But see, look at the, see the paint on the needle in there? See that? So I gotta take all this apart, clean it really good. But if you get yourself one of these, uh, and you, or you want to learn how to use one when you want to get one, message me and I'll teach you how to use one of these. But uh, anyways, you can get these anywhere from, oh, I don't know, $50 all the way up to thousands of dollars. Um, I'm just a novice. Uh, I know I paint, I might paint a car with it or something. I use it to paint this trailer, but you want to just keep your stuff clean. Okay. Cause the, whenever it's clean, then uh, the, the, the results are much, much better. So we're going to go take the uh, paper off the boat right now. All right, well, here's the trailer in the boat. So got the clear coat on, turned out real nice. There's my Cadillac, see that fin? There's that fin. It's like, a, like the lower fin on an old Cadillac. Okay, so I left that aluminum. I'm gonna I'm gonna polish it. But there she is, folks. And tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, and uh, we're gonna bust out. I got some really cool attachments for this thing. You're gonna really dig it. All right. <clears throat> now we have our winch. It has our rope. It's three eighths polypropylene, which is really strong. It floats. It's perfect for boating. I got to put this. Uh, little clip on here so here's what we're gonna do there's, there's like five really good knots you can use in the uh, in boating but I'm gonna use it's probably the most common one it's called a bowline knot so all you want to do is get your rope put a loop in it like that okay got a little loop we want to put the, our rope through whatever we're doing okay so we got this and this okay then we come around the back and go through the hole and you go around this and then back through the hole again. See that? And then you just kind of cinch it all down and there it is. See that? And the more you pull it, the tighter it gets. <clears throat> Here we go. I'll probably use the same knot when I tie my anchor. I have a 150 foot anchor rope, so, and I have a really old anchor I'm gonna use. So we're gonna use the same knot, the bowline knot. <laughs> 